friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. So you may have noticed that we're not in my basement. We are actually at the Ojibwe Prairie Complex in Windsor, Ontario. We are hoping to have an amazing herping adventure, fingers crossed. And I'm going to start with this log pile right here. Let's get to it. Okay, so we didn't find anything here, but that's okay. We're gonna move on to the next spot. But whenever you're doing anything like this, you always wanna make sure that you put everything back the exact same way it was when you got there. Cause you never know, you might've just destroyed someone's home and you wanna make it nice for them when they get back. Today's plan is to explore the various parks looking for reptiles and amphibians or any other critters that we can find. The Ojibwe Prairie Complex is a 350 hectare complex made of five parks and nature reserves. Ojibwe Park, the Tallgrass Prairie Heritage Park, the Black Oaks Heritage Park, Ojibwe Provincial Nature Reserve, and the Spring Gardens Natural Area. It is also part of the Detroit Wildlife Refuge, making it the only international wildlife refuge in North America. Okay, so we are here at the Tallgrass Prairie Heritage Park. The Tallgrass Prairie used to cover almost a quarter of all of North America, but now it only covers less than half a percent. The Tallgrass Prairie ecosystem is home to thousands of plants, animals, and insects. And is right now a globally endangered ecosystem. Okay, so there are two species that I would really like to be able to see and catch today. First, the eastern fox snake, which I would love to be able to catch. And then, of course, there's the genetically distinct population of Massasauga rattlesnakes. I would love to see one of them, not handle it. I don't, I don't think I would like to risk getting bitten by them. But of course, I'm happy with anything that we catch. friend. Okay, so we just caught this common garter snake. We can tell it's not a butler's garter snake, which is endangered because of the stripe along the side is on the scale rows one, two, and three, which is the scale rows that the stripe would be on for a common garter snake, which is this species. We can also tell that it's not a ribbon snake because of the size of the head and the coloration. It has little black lines along its lip that tells me it's a common garter snake and not a ribbon. And it does not have a white dot in front of the eye like a ribbon snake would. Let's put him back and see what else we can find. All right, little one, go on. Hey, you're free. Bye. Gonna go away. Good boy. I got him. Are, are you the same one? You're the same one. We released you over there. What was that? Huh? What was that little one? Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Take okay, it back. Again. This time. Go away. Good boy. Bye bye. Oh, oh, 
frog. Look at that frog. This is why I wanted to wear boots. What'd you get? Got a really, really small little toad. Oh, 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 don't let him jump off. Don't let him jump off. Oh, little friend. Go backwards. Oh, oh my God, Jay. Dad. Ah, this is like the world's smallest toad. Toadlet. Oh, nope. Oh, little buddy. Where'd you go? It's a little hurt vole. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's not trying to get away. Dad, put this stuff down here. No, 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 don't try and get up. Don't try and get up. Okay, so this little guy was not actually hurt. He was just hoping I wouldn't notice him and move on, which clearly failed epically because I have a highly tuned cuteness radar and it was going off the charts. I thought at the time that it was a meadow vole, a tiny adorable little creature that is commonly found in these types of grassland. Turns out it was actually a short tailed shrew, an adorable tiny little creature that is commonly found in these types of grasslands. There are some amazing things about short tailed shrews that we didn't know about until we researched them later on, which is why we're back in my basement. <laughs> they actually are almost completely blind their tiny eyes only being able to distinguish light from dark. They have this long pronounced nose, so you would think that they have an amazing sense of smell. But you'd be wrong. These guys actually have a pretty poor sense of smell. They get around using echolocation and an extremely sensitive sense of touch. If you listen closely, you may actually be able to hear him clicking away. Hi, sweetheart. Oh my goodness, you're making the cutest little noises I think I've ever heard. You're okay, you're okay. Come on. His fur was impossibly soft. I, I can't even describe it. It was hard to tell when you were actually touching this guy. He was just that soft. And he was so cute. Another amazing thing about these guys that I had no idea about when I picked them up is that they are venomous. Oh my goodness, ow, don't, don't bite me. Biting's bad. People don't bite. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Whoopsie. Venomous mammals. <laughs> Who knew? Their venom isn't really that harmful to humans, but it does make for a pretty painful bite. Thankfully, the nip I got from this guy didn't break the skin. So, we're all fine. Do you want to go back, little fella? I bet he does. Go right, home. Cool. No, no, no. There you go. Goodbye. Go on, cutie. Okay, so I just caught this Decay's brown snake. This is about an adult size for them. They get very, very small. I found it underneath a piece of metal, old metal that was over in the grass. These guys feed on snails, slugs, earthworms, and they often come out in the afternoon to eat. And since there were a bunch of snails underneath that piece of metal, that's probably what this guy was doing. Okay, let's put him back where we found him so that he can finish his meal. Goodbye. And now you're invisible. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me, the all-Canadian reptile girl, and all the wild animals that you saw today. I hope you enjoyed watching us have our little herping adventure. Even
even though we didn't see a Massasauga rattlesnake, which my mom is kind of happy about, Yep. and we didn't catch a eastern fox snake, we still had an amazing time. It was a beautiful day and we're in a beautiful spot. And I mean, we did catch a decays brown snake and garter snakes and a vole, so it's a pretty good day. Like I said earlier, this is an endangered ecosystem, so if you would like to find out ways to help it and help protect this place, you can check out the links in the description below. Please check out my other videos and my Instagram, and as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and remember, nurture all nature. See you next time, bye! So what do you call this wing thingy? It's called a dead cat. People are bad at naming things sometimes. I don't, don't like that. I don't. I don't get the appeal of hats like this. Like it, I don't like how how you can't see the sky out of the top of your eyes. It's just. I don't like hats. And you're wearing the most blinged out hat ever. Let's look. Look at this hat for a second here. What is that exactly? Can Bass you explain? Pro Shop. It's a Bass Pro Shop hat. Who <laughs> picked little. that hat? Did you pick that hat? I, I think I, I think it was actually Alex's. I think you might be right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll blame it on your sister then. Yeah. Annalise, yeah, what are you doing? Putting calamine all over my lungs with my legs and like every bit of exposed skin because I'm the only one that got bitten and they went everywhere. I don't think I got bit once. They stuck right in. Mom, did you get bit? No, I did not. I don't think so. Why'd you get bit so much? I must be delicious. It's a curse. Okay, so we were out here fishing on Creek and we found this beautiful little queen snake. This is the second time that we found one of these guys in this area, which is really cool because these guys are actually endangered and very hard to find. They're a type of water snake, but um, commonly get mistaken for garter snakes because they look very similar to them.